Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 17th, 2017. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, we're entering the busy part of the Atlantic hurricane season now, and we'll have uh, likely many things in the tropics to discuss over the next few weeks. Uh, we've had GERT form between Bahamas and Bermuda a few days ago. It recurved northeast off your screen, became a hurricane, and is now transitioning to a non-tropical storm well off in the North Atlantic, no threat to land. But we do have two systems in the tropical Atlantic that could be threats to land. Uh, this western one is uh, going to affect the Lesser Antilles as soon as tonight. This is potential tropical cyclone 9. And remember, this potential thing is new this year where the National Hurricane Center will issue advisories and warnings for systems that have not yet become tropical storms but are expected to do so and bring tropical storm conditions to land areas, in this case the Lesser Antilles, within a short time. Uh, this may already be a tropical storm. In fact, it probably is. You can see the well-defined circulation on the eastern side of the cloud mass. There is an Air Force Reconnaissance Hurricane Hunter mission currently east of Guadalupe. The plane is flying toward the system as I record this. You'll likely see that data coming in by the time this video is posted. And if it confirms that there's a well-defined circulation here, we will likely have a tropical depression or tropical storm Harvey, depending on what kind of winds they find in here. Uh, this is moving west very quickly. We have tropical storm warnings out from the Grenadines through Martinique, a tropical storm watch for Dominica, and a tropical storm warning for Barbados. Uh, this will be moving through or very close to Barbados uh, probably early tomorrow morning, and then through the Lesser Antilles during the day Friday, and then on into the Eastern Caribbean. And uh, the question is, how much will this strengthen during that time? Well, what we can see on satellite here is, uh, although it's becoming pretty well defined at the surface, most of the clouds are off on the western side, and that's because there is some easterly shear here from right to left. You'll see some of these milky white cirrus clouds not expanding away from the storm, but instead kind of moving from right to left. And this indicates uh, some kind of easterly shear. You can see that a little bit more clearly on the water vapor here, all this flow moving from right to left. Um, a little bit faster than the actual storm is, and so we're pushing all those thunderstorms off onto the western side. In addition, you can see that the thunderstorms don't have a lot of structure here. They're kind of pulsing up and down. They've been persistent, but you're not seeing any really well-defined bands, except, you know, there's a little bit of a band here and a little bit of a band here, but there's, there's really nothing very organized over the center of circulation at the moment. And this probably indicates that we're not going to see rapid intensification as the storm approaches the Lesser Antilles, but tropical storm conditions are expected regardless of uh, whether this technically gets labeled a tropical storm or not during that time, and uh, gales will likely occur on the northern side with higher gusts. Now, as this enters the Caribbean, it, it enters a rather complicated upper-level flow pattern, and so the intensity forecast is a little bit complicated. So what we're looking at here on the water vapor again is there's nine, there's a giant, giant upper-low uh, just north of eastern Cuba, another giant upper low over the central Atlantic, and now we have a ridge developing in the middle. So you got low, low, and high pressure here in the upper levels. Now what this is doing is as 9 comes toward the Caribbean, these features, the low here and the high to its east, are both moving west at about the same speed as the storm. And this high, as it develops here, is eventually going to start bringing northerly flow from up or from the upper part of your screen downward into the Caribbean as 9 moves west of the Lesser Antilles. And so the expectation from the model forecast here is that we're going to transition from easterly shear to northerly shear over the storm. We can see this on the GFS upper level forecast out to very early Saturday morning. Here's our big upper low here. Here's our upper ridge to its east. And then you can see the other upper low sort of off your screen here. So you can see the flow coming out over nine as it sits here south of Puerto Rico. There's the low and you can see all this flow in the upper levels coming out of the north. This is not very favorable for the storm and this shear is expected to be about 15 to 20 knots as this enters the Caribbean. So what you're seeing now with the clouds sort of being pushed away from the center, not completely away but you know definitely on one side of the system, that is likely to continue at least for the next couple of days, and this will likely limit intensification of the system. So we're not expecting anything rapid to happen here, and although some strengthening could occur, um, there's probably not a lot of it that's expected right now. Um, as we continue forward, this becomes a little more interesting later, because as the storm moves west, this upper low continues to move west at roughly the same speed, and so the system kind of stays stuck 
on this flank of the ridge and this northerly shear really continues for a while as the system moves toward uh, the longitude of Jamaica and even in the Central Caribbean it still could be sheared. Now the question is later on as it moves into the Western Caribbean here can it get into this part of the ridge instead of this part of the ridge where the flow is more out of the, the east or southeast and a little bit less shear in that case. If that happens then the environment could become a little more favorable for development or strengthening of nine once it gets into this part of the Caribbean which it is expected to do. And the reason it's moving west here by the way is because this ridge in addition to shearing the storm is also functioning as kind of a steering ridge because it extends down into the lower troposphere as well and uh, as these move west it moves west co-located with the storm and so it this ridge stays north of nine throughout the next few days perpetually steering it toward the west and not letting it come very far north and that's expected to drive the storm all the way into the western caribbean potentially threatening central america uh, in several days. We can see that on the track guidance here very tightly clustered through the Caribbean and then on into this region. Of course there's always uncertainty by days four and five. We're talking about next week. Things could change. There's especially uncertainty with what happens to this upper low once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. How these things uh, d disintegrate because they eventually weaken due to convection warming them up. Once that happens it could be a little bit of uncertainty in terms of the steering flow and also the shear and so both the intensity and track forecast could change as it gets into the Western Caribbean. But right now, there's a strong consensus that this will be a threat to Central America later on, and so we'll keep a close eye on that. But it's a bit far away yet to know the details. We'll have to see how it does in the Caribbean. The NHC track forecast follows suit with this. Again, you can see a gradual strengthening tropical storm as it crosses the islands through the Caribbean, and then they have it at hurricane strength by days four and five. And again, this is very possible as upper level conditions gradually become a little more favorable by that time. But again, the details a little bit murky um, in terms of the intensity forecast by the time it gets there. We'll have to wait a couple days to see how it looks. Um, but again, uh, a threat potentially to the likes of Central America and the islands in the Western Caribbean by that time, and we'll keep a close eye on it. Here are the warnings uh, in blue for portions of the Western Antilles we talked about earlier. Now, in addition to potential tropical cyclone 9, we have another system to its east-northeast. Uh, here's another satellite loop from NASA. There's 9, and here's this other INVEST, 92L, it's been dubbed. And uh, this uh, we're watching for development as well. And you can see what might be sort of an elongated low-pressure circulation here. It doesn't look well-defined enough yet to call it a tropical depression, but it could become well-defined enough to develop over the next couple of days. And we're keeping a close eye on it. You can see some fairly healthy convection. It's difficult to see under there to see exactly what the wind flow looks like. But again, it doesn't look well-defined enough yet. It could uh, in a couple of days. But it also has unfavorable conditions ahead of it in the short term. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of shear over it now. But if we look at the water vapor again, you can see this giant upper low in the central Atlantic. As this system moves west-northwest, you can see some of the cirrus coming down here. That's about to encounter 92 in a big way. And this is a lot of shear coming. And it's likely to struggle to intensify or develop quickly. Now, the track guidance here looks a little bit scary, bringing it west-northwest, just north of the islands, and then into this area into uh, by days four and five and onward and of course that would be a threat to land but again there's a lot of unfavorable conditions out ahead of it this is the gfs model forecast out to very early sunday morning this would be a trop or potential tropical cyclone nine or harvey probably at this time and uh, here the set of purple contours would be 92l just north of the lesser antilles uh, now the color field here shows um, upper level troughing basically so you got our big upper low here is a bomb of orange here's our other upper low is a bomb of orange and then another one here and a 92l kind of gets entangled with these features and there's a lot of shear and dry air running around here not very favorable upper level flow for tropical cyclone strengthening and so even if this is a tropical storm at this time we would not expect significant development until it were to untangle from these lows and it's not clear when that might occur um, as these can be hard to forecast, especially in the longer range here. So by the time we're talking about day four and five, when it's getting potentially into the Bahamas, it's kind of unclear what would be going on by that time. If there's actually a storm there, uh, we'll have to wait to see if conditions become a little more favorable. But through the short term, if it does become a storm, it's going to be encountering some very, uh, very bad conditions. And it could actually be prevented from becoming a storm at all or dissipate 
due to some of this shear, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. But it is that time of year now by late August where anything that survives and gets toward land will have to be watched carefully as it doesn't take much to get these things to strengthen at this time of the year. So we'll keep a close eye on both of these. There's another wave even behind coming off Africa now. That's also in the tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, uh, but it is farther away from impacting land and we'll be watching primarily these two during the next few days. Um, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.